Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to Alan Wake 2. We've just arrived in Bright Falls proper and we're gonna wander around, explore a little bit and make our way to the diner. We chat the diner's to some just people. up the waterfront. Shouldn't keep the sheriff and our witnesses waiting. I smell coffee. For those of you just tuning in, you're listening to the Pat Main Radio Hour, brought to you by Davis Family Moose Jerky. And boy, what an eventful day here in Bright Falls. By now, we've all seen the FBI setting up shop in town, and I'm sure you're all asking the same question I am. Did they bring all this darn rain with them? Deerfest is right around. It's suggesting that I can listen to the radio in here somehow. Ooh. That concludes our debate on whether pets should be allowed at this <laughs> year's bake sale. For those of you just tuning... Okay, cool, though. We can kind of collect there. them this time. Yes. Great. And, Tapio, what kind of weather can we expect today? Rain! Uh, <laughs> that definitely seems to be on the menu. How about over the next week? Rain. Oh, so rain! Right. Care to uh, elaborate? Any chance the sun will poke out in time for Deerfest? No. <laughs> well, Deerfest is coming, rain or shine. And that parade lineup is looking dandy as ever. Yes, I like this parade because they're one float in the shape of a swan. Long neck and everything. A very large swan. Ah, so you're a fan of swans? No. <laughs> right, well, that's our time. We'll be right back after this next song by the rock and roll sensation, National Nightmare. Okay, got some music as well. Ah, good old Pat Main still doing his little radio show. Amazing. Let's have a little poke around. There's something I wanted to talk about. I realized, um, so someone, I can't remember your name, I'm so sorry. Someone left a fantastic comment on the last episode of the Alan Wake 1 playthrough, kind of going into the ending and the links with control. Can't open this with my bare hands. And all that kind of jazz. <clears throat> What's this say? Oh, that's... Um, definitely worth checking out the comment if you want to get some grounding on Alan Wake and the ending and yada yada yada. And they mentioned, is it Carlson? I can't remember his name, but the monomyth, which was something... Uh, it's basically, you, you may have heard of the hero's journey, which is a basically a story writing technique or kind of a thing that applies to most stories. It just suggests that basically most most novels out there and most stories, not even just novels, stories passed down for generations, follow a Hello. fairly... How are you? Hello, person. Follow a fairly typical structure. There is a normality and then there's an inciting incident. Stuff happens, yada, 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 and then at the end there's a return to um, the status quo, back to the normal world. There's like the normal world and there's the adventure world. I don't know how to describe it. Anyways, it's all stuff I've kind of talked about before. Um, the first chapter of this game is called Return 1, and the interesting thing about that is Return is the final stage in the monomyth. It's, it's after the climax of the story, when the hero has to return back to the original world in this whole, in this new version of the original world, you know, post everything that's gone in. If you think about, like, Frodo and them at the end of Lord of the Rings, going back to the Shire, right? That's the return. So the fact that the first chapter in this game is called The Return is actually really interesting and probably worth keeping an eye on. Got a Bright Falls map. Handy. Oh, we're going to, oh wait, could I go into that lodge? I didn't go in because I thought it was the diner, but... Hey, person. Elderwood. Elderwood's back, baby. Where history meets hospitality. Oh, God, maybe I could... I, you know, that's a really interesting point. I could use Alan Wake 2 as, like, a much better, much more detailed grounding for Elderwood. Imagine building this in Elderwood. And I can just come in the game and kind of video it. Oh, I kind of want to do it now. Oh, that's tempting. I'll be back in a second. Roger. No, my name's Saga, not Roger. <laughs> can I go in? Yeah. So sleepy. My tower. Uh, just a few more days. I guess DFS is busy work, eh? This one's boogieing. Good to see you. Night fever, night fever. We know how to do it. 
There's no music playing. <laughs> He's psycho. <laughs> private, you say? Don't mind if I do. I'm the FBI, goddammit. Nothing's private. Rest easy, buddy. <laughs> it's kind of a nice character trait. Rasaga clearly has like a little bit of an affinity for these animals, and she sees its head on a wall. <laughs> it has to be looked after, it has to be treated nicely. I appreciate that. Whoa, whoa. Is this DFS planning? No, this is murder observation. I, I get a strong feeling we're going to be back here later on. And I should probably just carry on with the game. I'm going to run I'm just going to go do that. Because that wall feels important already. <laughs> that wall does not feel... Oh, look at that. Water cooler bubbling. Nice little detail. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back. It's fine. Right, down this way towards the diner then. The historic Elderwood Palace Lodge at Bright Falls. This building was constructed as a part of one of the... I should just read them, right? One of the greater Bright Falls area. Built in 1898, the building has been both in private and public use through the years and has bravely stood the test of time. In 2015, it was carefully taken apart and relocated here in downtown Bright Falls, where it was rebuilt into its original glory log by log. The Elderwood's Palace Lodge reopened in Bright Falls in 2016 and has served its customers faithfully ever since. This is... The lodge... Is this the building, then... That was overlooking the lake in the past. Did you get lost, Anderson? I'm exploring lake. Just how much coffee have you had today, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> don't know, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> how much have you had? Not enough. That's how much. <laughs> Never enough coffee. You tell her, Charlie. Oh, that's rich. I need bolt cutters. Okay, interesting. There's lots of little. The, the, the game is definitely more open than the past game, right? And there's all these little side routes we can take. It's less linear already. I think I saw something. It's a diner. It'll only take a minute. I'm just gonna have a little poke down here, though. Let me guess. The FBI. This is a little suspicious. Why is she in a suit? Staring at a dumpster. <laughs> she lost I feel like she's lost something. I feel like again, I feel like that's a quest maybe waiting to happen. I'm just not allowed to do them yet, maybe. You must be Sheriff Breaker. Are we sure that isn't what's his name? Who's Kick Boy? Chuck Norris. Nice to meet you, Sheriff. I'm set for coffee. You know I wouldn't say no to another. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. This is Agent Alex Casey. Tim Breaker. And let me just say I'm happy you two are here. Frankly, we could use the help. Side note, was Alex Casey the name of the protagonist in Wake's series of crime novels? Your deputies said you had a couple of witnesses here. I think so. They made them sound like suspects. Mulligan and Thornton are still on about that? No, no, the bookers don't strike me as the murdering type, but you can decide for yourselves. They're just inside having coffee and pie to calm their nerves. I'll see what they have to say. <laughs> Casey, you compare notes with the sheriff. Take your time. Nothing comes to nerves like caffeine, eh? <laughs> looked through the case files you said back in the sure. diner. Have you had many people Jukebox down here on the back left. Yep. Does it still play Lime in the Coconut, though? That is the question. Does it still play the Lime in the Coconut? Oh, no. <laughs> the jukebox is out of order. The poor old thing can only take so much of the same song being played over and over. I'm as big a fan of Coconut as the next person, but come on. <laughs> Boo. A little poke down here. Now this, you'll remember. Is that another deal? I wonder if there's an achievement attached. I feel like they're so prominent. I feel bad for these guys. That there must be an achievement attached to this, which means I don't want to do it because I want that bloody obnoxious epic thing to pop up again. Yep, there you go. <laughs> of course, teamwork makes the dream work. Lovely stuff. Let's poke around. Now this, of course, is where Alan got accosted by the uh, the lass, the uh, spooky lass. It's not opening. Horror bathroom. Nothing good happens in a horror bathroom. Yeah, you can tell I don't have the proper ray tracing stuff on. Otherwise, I'd probably get a reflection there. No horror loss this time, though. That's a step in the right direction. 
All right, let's go chat to these witnesses. I'm just, I'm casing the joint, scoping out the place, you know? You the bookers? Excuse me. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. Are you the bookers? That's us. I'm Tammy, and he's Ed. Hello, officer. Just Saga is fine, Ed. So, are we being charged with anything? Because if not, we'd love to get back to our hotel and decompress after what we saw. Take a bath, screw into pillows, that kind of thing. We're not charging you. I just have a few questions. Nothing to stress about, okay? Why were you at Colton Lake? What were you doing at Colton Lake last night? I'm a writer. True crime. We're here from New York, doing some research on a famous novelist, Alan Wake, who went missing here. I was down at the lake, getting some details. Perfectly legal. I'm not accusing you of anything. Can you tell me what you saw? So what did you see in the woods? This naked dude came out of the lake, and he was acting crazy, shouting weird shit at us. He must have been on something. Unless skinny dipping at dawn is a thing around here. Then we heard shooting. We ran into these psychos and deer masks. They were tearing into the naked guy with knives, like some kind of satanic cult. And then we bolted and called the cops. Why do you think it was a cult? What makes you say it was a cult? <laughs> the masks and knives aren't enough. Yeah. They were shouting, Cult of the tree. The cult of the tree. Cult of the tree. Oh, and then we found it. The whole thing was terrifying. You found uh... a... No, 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 that's not all. You found a... Good to see you. I'm a little worried, like, the game's running fine on my screen, but I feel like it's lagging in OBS. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, it's, it's making me a little bit paranoid, so I am gonna go check to make sure I've not got, like, I've messed up my recording settings, so I'll be back in a sec. Nope. Seems okay. Definitely doesn't seem as smooth as it does on my screen, and my preview is, I just need to not look at the preview, it's messing with my head. Okay, the bookers. Again, double exposure. <laughs> the cult of the tree. The cult of the tree. What are the bookers telling me? I found their necklace. The symbol is two triangles. The cult wants their spruce tree bag, Tammy. Finders keepers, Ed. My publisher will want this on the cover. Tammy found something. A necklace belonging to one of the cultists. Sometimes I feel like her, uh... <laughs> that's, that's verging into psychic territory rather than just, you know, profiling intuition. Now, I'm not against that because at the end of the day, this game has much in the ways of spooky things, but it is definitely more than standard profiling. You could maybe deduce that, you know, they found something you would expect, them, you know, based on what they said, but that they found the necklace, mm, not so sure. The bookers were at Cauldron Lake. Why? The fence was built to hide what's there. They say the rider fell in the lake. Private party. No trespassing. My book has questions. Past the bolt cutters. They broke in for the sake of Tammy's book. Nothing to do with a the murder. They were telling the truth. Of course, we got music. Sure. I think you found something. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that together? It's evidence. You need to hand it over. Okay. Okay. Told you not to keep that thing to me. Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Do me a favor. Stick around town for now in case we have any more questions. <laughs> Like we'd even dream of missing Deerfest. Oh, God. Saga! Saga Anderson. As I live and breathe. Rose is still around. I thought we'd never see you back here after that awful, awful thing happened to your baby girl. How are you? Um, I'm sorry. Who are you? I don't know what you're talking about. It's me, silly. Rose, you know me. I don't think I do. And what horrible thing happened to my baby girl? 
She drowned your daughter. That's so weird you don't remember. How do you know I have a daughter? Oh, I know what this is. You're blocking out your traumatic memories. Happens on TV all the time. No. You're mistaking me for someone else. <laughs> if you say so. I don't think she is, though. I mean, you can mistake someone, sure, but you don't then call them by name. And Saga is hardly a, a common name. I mean, it kind of sticks out as being very Scandinavian. In an American game. <laughs> All set. My guys have Nightingale at the morgue, if you're ready to go take a look. Let's go. To the mind well, player. Okay. Oh, I got a lead. Not loud. Looks like we're dealing with a cult. The cult of the tree. A murder cult. <laughs> Fuck. Have you heard of this cult of the tree, Sheriff? Only the urban legend. If you're in the woods at night, the cult will get you. That sort of thing. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? I played some D&D &D back in the day. The wizard was always my favorite class. Morning, Sheriff! Looks like you have some guests. Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deerfest. Always draws a crowd, right? <laughs> Too true. More the merrier. Have a good one, Sheriff. You too, Ted. Seems like a happy-go-lucky kind of chap. Hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? Yeah, she's a bit of a space case. She always has been. Well, she did Why? get possessed by the What'd dark entity. Now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible. But it's best not to take it personally. It looks so pretty. I want to see DFS in like full force. Also, it's very cool that this keeps happening around DFS. I hope every Alan Wake game occurs at DFS in this town. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Lead the way, Sheriff. I am Aladdin. Okay, I wanted to. I had a couple things, I think. Don't know if it was in <clears throat> profiling. On the case board. Cases, there we go. Oh, we've got new lunchboxes as well, don't we? Alright, let's get these up on the board. Lunchbox found. Yeah, we've got a couple more. Where are we? All the way over here. Who left these? Cauldron Lake area. It's all these are all Cauldron Lake, right? This is actually an interesting way of. It's kind of like a tracking me mechanism in a game in that. Like, I know I've got three, like, maybe we find out, oh, there's six around Cauldron Lake, and I've got three so far, and I've, you know, put them here at Cauldron Lake, so we kind of know that's where they are. I think that's, that's quite an interesting way of looking at it. The book has described multiple attackers wearing deer masks, chanting and tearing into the guy with knives, so that goes <clears throat> killer profile. We're dealing with an organized group of killers, not a lone serial killer. Case closed. Damn. The cult of the tree is behind these murders. This case just became much more complicated. I'll need to start a new file. Oh. But it's my first cult case. Exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> like some people are like, well, do you get excited about that? That's monstrous, but no, it is exciting. I, I again I feel like it's maybe a little bit presumptuous to close all these murders based on the one similarity. It could be a copycat killer or it could be a coincidence. I mean, the chance of being coincidence seems very low. The Cult of the Tree. Points of interest. Background case. Main case. Cool. Background cases accumulate clues about broader, ongoing topics. So this is all about the cult. I need to know more about the Cult of the Tree if I'm going to shut them down. Okay. Oh, things are happening. Stop a cult. We need to understand them. Their ideology, their... So that's uh, what kind of cult are they? Who's involved? And the cult goal. A cult necklace. Probably up here, if I had to guess. Cult symbols. Deer masks. Maybe who's involved? Keep trying. Oh, that felt right to me. Okay, it's probably this one then. Symbols, psychology. Who's involved? Because you know they're wearing masks to present their identity. 
Triangle figures, and that's obviously going to be in symbols as well. Marking territory, a warning feels derivative, like something out of a horror film. <laughs> triangle figures made of twigs. A cult necklace with a triangle symbol. It feels a little bit like the ritual. That um, it's a pretty good horror film, actually. I'll be right with good you, sir. Yep, yep. Just here to pay my ticket. Whenever you're ready to take my money. Have they gone somewhere? <laughs> Got lost. No speeding happening here, I see, sir. Some patience, please. <laughs> See you around. You too, I guess. I don't. Oh, this way. Okay. Uh, I mean, while we're here, right? Helmets save lives. They damn well do, buddy. They damn well do. My concern is that, like, the game is like limiting what I can currently Agent? loot and explore. I don't think it is so. Ooh. What did we just get? No idea. I don't actually know how to access my inventory. The game. Know, We've not gone through that the tutorial yet. Is being taken over by the federal agents. Sheriff Breaker wants us to cooperate fully. Aye, aye, ma'am. I'm being serious, Nelson. Yeah, Nelson. I'm in the room, for God's sake, Nelson. Use your head, son. Ooh. Oh, dear. I am a tourist, and it appears that I'm lost in the woods. You only had a tour guide, also. It's bear season. <laughs> oh, no. A bear. <laughs> Did somebody call for a tour guide? Oh, wow. Koskala Brothers Adventure Tours. Unforgettable tour experiences at affordable prices. That's right. I'm Ilmo Koskala, voted best coffee roaster slash tour guide by Coffee World Magazine. And I'm here to give you the tour of a lifetime. But Ilmo, I've heard the government has seized and restricted access to many local nature attractions. That is true, Yako. Many local attractions have recently become fenced off by the government. And that's why, at Koskala Brothers Adventure Tours, we say, Fuck the government! <laughs> we have bolt cutters. Oh, wow. You think of everything. And we'll take you anywhere! Hiking through the scenic Elderwood National Park. Fishing in the crystal clear waters of Bright Falls Dam. Bird watching at Majestic Mirror Peak. A tour of a lifetime is just one phone call away. Book now to get a 9% discount on this limited edition Oh Dear Diner coffee thermal. I want to watch all of Once again, the TV is the most exciting part of these games to me. I was hoping for more episodes of Night Springs, though. I've still got my fingers crossed for that. Don't be an easy target. <laughs> Again, it's got this very weird... It's kind of... It adds to the unsettling vibe a little bit in that... There's lots and lots of sort of Scandinavian names and influences and stuff like that in a very decidedly American set game. Because it's a Scandinavian company. Um, oh, I got a map. Nice. Uh, Remedy are Norwegian or Swedish or something. Okay. Kill the Joe, make some mo. This is third time this week I come in for late shift and there's no coffee in the machine. You take the last cup, you brew a new badge. Chat, I hate to break it to you, but you need to have a face capable of growing a beard to make effective use of beard oil. I knew Marco's beard was too soft to be natural. What brand is he using, Lucy? Since my numerous friendly reminders about not having personal packages to live to the station have gone unheeded, from here on out, if you seem fit to send something to the station, I will see fit to announce to the station what you've received. Is it a federal offence to open someone's mail? Yes it is. Is it a personal offence that I need to share my desk space with your late night impulse buys? Yes it is. You've been warned. Warned. Admin. P.S. Officer Lightfoot, your beard oil is ready for pickup. <laughs> the front desk computer and admin email not to be used for personal queries or for unofficial business. Remember to wash your coffee mugs. Hey gang, the annual event you've all been eagerly awaiting is upon us again. The Community Outreach Barbecue. Now, I don't want to hear any grumbling. This is a valuable opportunity to connect with the community. Statistics show that officers who are well integrated with communities they see, serve see lower instances of violent crime in their precincts, are more effective in their policing, and have overall better mental wellness. This is for your benefit. Take it seriously. The community voted drunk tank victim this year will be, drum roll please, Deputy Thornton. Congratulations. Looks like everyone's getting retribution for that speed trap on 12C at last, eh? 
A friendly reminder that everyone out sick on the day needs to provide a written stock to note or you'll be signed night shift for two weeks. Anyone who replies all to complain about their assignment will be volunteering as the assistant for Officer Lightfoot's magic routine. Oh. Are they... What are they? I've got... I made bullets, batteries, and then something. I'm glad we're exploring. We are, we are so getting So we share stuff. a morgue with the funeral home next door. It's a shoestring budget. I guess you guys don't have that problem, though. Our only coroner rotates between a few other towns and he's away this week, but you can handle this, right? I'm qualified to perform examinations. Yes. Of course you are. Okay, you could make it less spooky. Like, if I was ever going to open a morgue, I would make it, like, a chill place. You know, it would be like a coffee hangout. Because <laughs> they're too depressing. For sale, coffee cup mas mas mascot costume, $50. I'd be all over that. Hello. Yeah, I don't, are they pills, maybe? Pain pills? Painkillers or something like that? can't open this with my bare hands. God, we're going to really, really need to bang. Right, remember this, ladies and gentlemen. Downstairs in the morgue, we need the bolt cutters. Cause I'll have to come back later on. Yeah, you know, you just... <laughs> Why not have it be a much nicer vibe? And then just have a few dead bodies lying around. I know you have to keep it cold and sterile and stuff, but bleh. I mean, look at it, seriously. <laughs> Come on, guys. I do appreciate that they don't, like, make you open every drawer to find something. You can open the drawer that's got stuff in it. You don't need to open all the drawers. Except the lockers, for some reason, that don't follow that rule. Oh, here we go. Well, I don't know what that is, but I've got four of them. All right, what have we got here? Hello. It doesn't budge. It doesn't budge, guys. Okay, let's take a look at our patient. I'll start with the external inspection before performing the internal examination. Hey, Nightingale. What was the cause of death? Probably this what hole. What other clues can the body give me? <laughs> I mean, not necessarily, right? He could have been killed any other ways, and then they just cave his chest in later. Aha. Uh -huh. They did leave something inside his chest. Oh, interesting. The body shows signs of being submerged in water post-mortem. Post-mortem? It doesn't add up. That doesn't add up. There's writing on here. On the heart? Can't make it out. Well, there is, yeah, look. Writing? How'd they manage that? Where my cursor is now. Hmm. This looks like text. A tattoo? Nightingale didn't strike me as a tattoo guy. Defensive wounds. He put up a fight. To the case board. Okay, we're on the wrong case, right? To do murder at Cauldron Lake. Examination of see Nightingale. What Nightingale's body can tell us. Anything to learn from the body? Defensive bruises. Cause of death. Smudged text. I do like that you do actually have to pick the correct one. I mean, it's not a big deal if you don't. You don't text get like proper smudged. punished, but. Looks inverted. Heart can't have been marked before removal. Tattoos on body and heart. How did killers have time? Doesn't make sense. Well, we know they didn't. Yeah, so the the tattoos. This was all done when he was in the lake. It's not a lake. It's an ocean. You have no idea how happy I was that you know that I lined up Alan Wake and Alan Wake two so perfectly that Alan Wake one final episode on Thursday title is not a lake. Alan Wake episode. Alan Wake two episode one the next day. It's an ocean. Just having that segue between the two made me. Unbelievably happy. It's such a stupid thing to be excited by, but it really did. It got me. Bloating of joints indicates long-term water exposure. Chest ripped open, something visible inside. There's definitely something in his chest. Did the killers leave it there? Cause of bloating unknown. Strange tattoos on skin and heart. Something was inserted inside the chest cavity. Stress trauma is clear cause of dreft death. Oh yeah, we've got a new map. So we've got a map for the police station. The fact that we have three maps already says plenty about um 
I, ah, ah, oh, she has me locked doors and, oh, you little stunner. You little stunner. <laughs> so they're locked, but they're bolt cut. Oh, I love that. It's hard, it's hard to describe how much I love that, actually. And we now have television as well. And there's different ones. Coscola's ad, adventure tours. So it looks like there's six of those, but maybe there's going to be some other things as well. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, I can do this now. I've got inventory. Pistol, handgun ammo, battery pack, trauma pad, restores health. Okay. Logan's charm increases maximum health. So you've got this kind of um, Resident Evil 4 style inventory. Anything else to learn from the body? Oop. Let's find out what's in his chest. Should really be wearing gloves, dear love. It's the same type of page we found at Cauldron Lake. Nightingale hunted Saga. Didn't see her. The Taken could not see into bright light. Light hurt them, made them vulnerable. Nightingale had no heart, but here he was. Killing. Someone's created a fucked up fantasy about us. Hey, hold on. We found these kinds of pages. I didn't think they were relevant to this case. I have them right here. Oh, this camera movement. Oh, obsessed. No, 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 wait. Try to stay in the light to avoid being detected by enemies. Isn't that a really cool inversion of the typical survivor horror formula? Hey, Nightingale. Like, the clicker must be a, no a noob as well, right? An object of power. He can't see me in the light. My gun's out in the hall. Gotta get it back. I'm meant to be safe heavens will restore some of your health if you leave or attack while in combat will become temporarily unavailable. Go. Things kicked off a bit, didn't they? <laughs> Jesus. What's going on? So I continue. Now, Alan Wake 1 had these... Yeah. It's post-chapter music bits. Thank you. 
waiting for the chorus to see how much it popped in. <laughs> he didn't have a heart, but he still got up. The page predicted all of it. It helped me fight him. Oh, oh, oh. He, he just disappeared? What the hell is going on here? We need to figure that out if we're going to do anything about it. Somehow we need to make sense of this. Saga was back at Cauldron Lake. Saga had to pursue Nightingale into the overlap. Finding a way in would be difficult. A ritual. Saga would learn how. Stop the monster. Okay. The autopsy room was a mess. Like a bomb had gone off. Nightingale hunted Saga. Didn't see her under the light. Lurched past her. The Taken could not see into bright light. The light hurt them. Hurt the darkness in them. Made them vulnerable. I flick the switch. It goes click. Show me the clicker. Lights are off, but somebody's home. Hemingway brought you here, witch. Get out of my house! Nightingale shouted. A wave of terror crashed through Saga's head. The awful truth. Nightingale had no heart in his chest, but here he was, killing a monster. The world had lurched out of balance. You found yourself trapped on the far side of the mirror. The victim was one of their own. FBI this Special Agent seen. Robert Nightingale. It's picked up a new I, I don't know why this makes a difference, but this makes them more entertaining than the last game. Saga was back at Cauldron Lake. He was there too, Nightingale was but wasn't a taken a creature of darkness he was beyond her reach where some other strange reality the dark place merged with ours this place in the dark place a tarp thrown over top drowning everything beneath it a flood of darkness soaking into everything spoiling it rotting it the page called this area an overlap saga had to pursue nightingale into the overlap Finding a way in would be difficult. Required precise steps. A ritual. Saga would learn how. Stop the monster before he killed again. Her job. He'd be inside, waiting for her. It's slightly ominous. Nightingale attacked us. Get it on the, the bloody dead board. Turned into a monster. Light as a way to fight him. Pages predicting the future. There's no rational explanation. This is the case we must solve. Do I have any... Oh, yeah. Nightingale attacked us. I used the sensitive to like fight him off. He got away. I need to hunt him down and figure out what the fuck is going on here. Saga had to pursue Nightingale into the overlap. Makes sense. It does make sense. Thank you. Saga was back at Cauldron Lake. He was there too. Taken. Okay. And the Cult of the Tree has updated. Cult goal. Victim of cult killing became a monster. Maybe that is straight up their goal, yeah. And victim's body. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Victim's body covered in writing. Page found inside the chest. Writing part of ritual. Nightingale was the only victim to become a monster. Why? Yeah, it's interesting as well. Right, what's this? Did we get a new radio? Oh, that's the... Oh, okay. It's the song from the chapter break. You know what's really good about this, actually? That it's instant. Look at that. That is actually... That might not seem like a big deal, but I think that's genuinely really impressive technology. That that's instantaneous between the two. All right, let's have a little poke around. <clears throat> See, there's a thing. If I hadn't explored, I wouldn't have got the... Okay, there's nothing in the thing. There's nothing in the thing. Must be locked from the other side. I'll lock you from the other side in a minute, bucko. We were attacked by a dead man. Right before things got crazy, Sheriff Breaker just vanished. Maybe the Sheriff knew more than he was letting on. Hmm. He seemed anxious, like he dreaded what was coming. One more mystery. I mean, it was only 13 years ago that everything went down. There's no way the, the people of Nightfall have forgotten. It's a little town. They just keep some secrets, you know? attacked by a dead man. There is no rational explanation to what we just saw. I'd love to blame this on mass hallucination caused by inhaling volcanic gas, but we both know that's bullshit. This was supernatural. Well, I'm glad you were the one to say it. 
Now we can figure out a way forward. Is this the work of the cult? The victim of a ritualistic murder turns into a monster. Is there a connection? Looks to me like the cult of the tree is performing rituals to create monsters. Hmm, maybe. We need to start with learning this cult's goal, their purpose. Let's go back to Cauldron Lake. The page places Nightingale back at Cauldron Lake. Calls him a Taken. We need to head over there, stop him, before anyone else gets hurt. Okay. The page demands it, we shall do it. We, we heard gunshots, y'all okay? Did you get spooked by the bodies? Sheriff Breaker disappeared. Nightingale turned into some sort of a monster and there are offices down. You two handle things here. We need to get back to Cauldron Lake immediately. Fuck me. That's terrible. <laughs> we'll do what we can, man. You should be very aware and suspicious of the fact that you just told them that a dead man with no heart turned into a monster and murdered crazy, people. Right, Thornton? Nightingale's heart was missing. How could he do anything? He's dead. Well, yeah, right. Well, that's all crazy talk. Hmm. Monsters aren't real, and what do you mean the... The sheriff disappeared. Like poof, he's gone like magic. Magic's not real. <laughs> Who says, buddy? <laughs> no, Thor. Monsters aren't real, and magic's definitely not real. <laughs> Just like listening to the conversations. I don't know. I, I felt initially that maybe they were. Just trying to pretend they don't know as much as they actually do. That could still be the case. Mm, they're a fine pair. All right. <laughs> Please don't say that while you're watching me from behind. <laughs> That's not appropriate. Hello. All right. I'm gonna finish exploring this station before we Good move day. on. My client has been held here long enough. Are you gonna let me speak to them or not? Uh, just a moment, ma'am. Someone will be right with you. Lawyers. How many times do we have to do this, Walter? Huh? I'm at my wits end with you. This is where this is where Nightingale got That's taken, right? We were in, I think, this one or this. I think we were in this one, and Barry was maybe in this one, and Nightingale got taken out of this door right here. Didn't look like this at the time, but like that's what happened. You in jail every other day. No, I don't. Do you have any idea how much paperwork you're causing me? What's well, a lot? It's just cool to see all these places, and I'm really glad that we I can't force replayed the first game before jumping into this one. I think that was a really good idea. <clears throat> I know one of you is stealing the toilet paper. I've been counting them, and there's an entire roll missing every day from stock. Theft is taken seriously around here. It's a sheriff's station, for Pete's sake. One of these days, I'm going to catch you red-handed, and you better be... be... leave. You're getting thrown out. What a disgrace you are. What kind of nut counts toilet paper rolls? Sounds like you've got too much time on your hands. <laughs> oh, oh, we do have... Oh, ooh. Ooh, I love a reflection. I do have... Half tracing on or whatever the heck it's called, so. Alright, I don't think there's anything else here. Nightingale and his cult are dangerous. We need to be prepared in case things escalate more than they already have. Can you call it in, Casey? A smart choice, Anderson. I think I could build this. Yeah, Agent Casey here. Yeah. But we need backup. The Bright Falls case. Whoever you can spare. ASAP. Your leg's okay, buddy. <laughs> Think we'll actually find Nightingale at the lake? The pages haven't been wrong yet. We can't assume the person writing these pages isn't playing us. I agree. But it's our best lead. This is the same symbol as that cult necklace. Interesting. I'm going to take a quick look around. I, Meet you back at the car. Funnily enough, this is... I, <laughs> I mentioned I was writing my novel in the uh, first one, and I actually started writing it again after playing Alan Wake because it, it kind of inspired me. Um... <clears throat> And I have a, a something very similar to that. Boy, do we have some breaking news that's sure to knock your socks off. 
Davis pop. family beef jerky will now be available at the Sunday market in three delicious flavors. That's right. Our favorite sponsor, Davis Family Beef Jerky, can now be enjoyed in smoked hickory, teriyaki, and hickory teriyaki. I handed out samples here at the Valhalla Nursing Home and thought I'd catch up with one of our residents to get her thoughts. Donna, how are you? I've got chronic back pain from my spinal stenosis. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> you know, when I'm feeling stiff, I find a light snack helps. So, did you try that beef jerky? No. Lunch is at 11, and I wanted to save my appetite because today was the fish soup with crackers. You're allowed up to four crackers, but I only take one unless I have a glass of cranberry juice. They ran out of cranberry juice at breakfast, which is at seven. I didn't take the oatmeal today because it makes me gassy before cribbage, and I can't... So you didn't try the jerky. Got it. Well, that's too bad, Donna. Their new teriyaki flavor sure does hit the spot. They had teriyaki salmon with rice on Friday's dinner menu. Dinner's at five. But we all know the salmon takes longer to prepare, and then you're late for bingo. And who needs all that spice? I agree. Teriyaki is a shit flavor. <laughs> who? Is that Tapio? How are you on the line? I couldn't end the call. You've been on the phone this entire time? Yes. And I hate teriyaki. Well, it's delicious on jerky. So... Let's give a big thank you to Wendy Davis for these samples. Wendy? No, that can't be right. Wendy went missing in 2010. I heard she's dead. No, I'm, I'm referring to Wendy Davis from our sponsor, Davis Family Beef Jerky. Wendy Davis, that's the dead one. <laughs> she's dead. Right. Well, that's our time. Remember to keep your coffee warm and your chin up because... That sun shines right around the corner. 2010 again. Pat Main signing off. He's calling in, but the last two people he's talked to have both been... He's, he's, ooh, laggy laggy. Is he at the nursing home? Is he running his show from there? Because, I mean, Pat was already a pretty old guy, and this was 13 years ago. Mia Seta won't roll over on the Mayor issues. Mia won't roll over on the issues. Oh, I get it. Because the set is a dog. Good one, Mia Seta. Good one. That's why I want for my mayor dog puns. <laughs> well, you know, probably do actually. I've never, never voted for a mayor. It must be said. I did meet the mayor off um, the Isle of Man once. My nan was very much a nan in that she would we would walk down the promenade in the Isle of Man, and she would stop and talk to like twenty five people, and she was talking to some guy for like an hour, and I was dying of boredom, obviously, because I was like a child. And uh, it turns out she was just chatting to the mayor, just having a lovely time. Anderson. Just getting my bearings. Ready to go? Waiting on you. The car can be used to travel. To yeah, it's like it's uh, open. I can do things. Okay. So, what have we got? A conversation neutral. Oh, I think we'll be hopping back over there. Screwdriver, locked door. Oh, completionist dream right here. The car. Wait, one sec. Is that, what's that? Point of interest? Point of interest? Is it you? It's here somewhere. It's very close by, whatever it is. I don't know if coming to this town is the best idea. Is it just... Hmm. It seems to be in this corner. So what's good here? Any nice restaurants? Good to see you. Booty. Well, uh, the restaurants and shops in town are Someone calls themselves a foodie, I instantly dislike them as a person. I'm sorry. Like, being a foodie these days means... How dare you? Oh. You're, you're gonna take that from her! If you're a fan of coffee and retro vibes, the uh, Oh Dear Diner is just down the street. Oh, do you go there a lot yourself? Sure. It's, um, very quaint. What did she say about Deerfest? What did she say about Deerfest? I don't see this point of interest. Maybe it's just the car. Anyway, so let's check out these conversations at the Oh Dear Diner. <laughs> I really wish I had a different sprint button, I'm not gonna lie. Left thumbstick in just feels awkward to me. 
Or at least it's the top, not a halt. There's the float. How about that weather forecast for Deerfest? I've been working on this float for a month straight. If it rains, I am gonna lose it. Is there a photo mode in this game? It'll ruin all the paper mache. Weird. This should be right. It's a beautiful game. This shit is delicate. I'm sure we'll get a nice sunny day. Oh, so now you're a meta a, a, a meteor a, a weatherman? <laughs> Meteorologist, by any chance? Na 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 me na me. No, 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 me. What have we got over here? Clay's Clam House. I don't think I can go into Clay's Clam House. As delicious as it sounds. All right, who wants the chili chat at the old Deer Diner? Yoko, we're going to a cool guy's house to drink some brewskis. Are you coming? Yes! No, Ilmo. I'm very busy wearing a turtleneck and drinking wine. Like an asshole. <laughs> oh dear, I know what Yako needs. I'm a beer to the rescue. Bring out your inner Wolverine with I'm a beer. Wow, this is the best party ever. Thanks, I'm a beer. I'm a beer is a traditional Finnish lager, and we drink it the Finnish way. At the bar while actively avoiding small talk with strangers. <laughs> Getting blackout drunk on a boat during midsummer and trying not to drown. Midsummer. In the sauna, using your beer can to hide your pippeli from wandering eyes. Partaking in the Finnish tradition of Kalsarikannit, drinking at home alone in your underwear with no intentions of going out. <laughs> it's not sad if it's intentional. Alma beer, your finished drinking adventure starts here. Well, at least we know where Remedy are from now. I, I need to Google that word to see if it's a real word. The one for drinking get home in your underwear with no intention of going out. It's kind of like um, Schadenfraud and stuff like that in German, where there's just this weird word that's designed for all circum... Well, like a very niche circumstance that usually wouldn't have a word. I love that they've got these, like... Microsoft Word style posters. Kids of all age can celebrate DFS at the Happy Harvest. All right, Rose, let's talk. How exactly do we know each other? So, Rose, help me out. How do you think we know each other? We all know each other around here. It's been a while, but I never forget a face or a coffee order. Guess I just have one of those faces. But she knew you by name. Maybe 2010? Seen anything around strange around the town? Seen anything out of the ordinary in town lately? Suspicious people in deer masks? No one's suspicious. But soon enough, there'll be lots of happy people wearing deer masks for deer fest. Practically everyone will be wearing one. Good to know. It's kind of spooky, isn't it? Mm, there's someone else you wanted to talk, unless it shows twice, because... No. What's that? You? Someone wants to chitty chat. And I would like to chitty chat with the person who wants to chitty chat. But nobody seems to want to chitty chat. I'm confused by this. Let me just run out so I'm not blocking as much. Man, it's so pretty. This is going to be... I, I, I don't know. Should I apologize? I'm going to apologize and just say it's not about to change. This is going to be a slow playthrough. I'm really excited about this game. Alan Wake 1 is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm very into the style of this game already, so I'm going to be taking my time and exploring, and sometimes that will mean pointless backtracking and yada, 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 but you just going to have to get over it, I'm afraid. I'm sure it won't be one for most people. Conversation, new choices. I feel like it's with Tam, Tammy and Thingy, but they're not there anymore. Because it's where they were sitting. <laughs> it, that's... Been, hmm. Hello? Hello? I don't know, it's kind of like that point of interest from earlier. Mm -hmm. That might be worth a Google after this, just to see if it's something that maybe... It's a bug, or I'm missing something, or just something I'd like... It's something I'd like to get a hold of nice and early, you know? For now, we shall head back to Cauldron Lake. I 
You ready to go, buddy? He's been standing there waiting for me. I need to come clean, Anderson. I know why Nightingale was here. Thirteen years ago, he was chasing a writer, Alan Wake. Tammy mentioned him. She's writing a book on his disappearance. You know the detective character from his books, Alex Casey. Yeah, I've heard the jokes at the office. Cold Case Casey. Murder Case Casey. <laughs> Sorry. Ha ha. It's the same name, similar job. It's the first thing anyone thinks of. It annoyed me, but that was it. Then, ten years ago, I started getting strange letters in the mail. Fragments of prose describing murders. You've heard the stories about what happened in New York. Some of it, at least. Bodies started to pile up. It was a murder cult. Turns out the fragments sent to me were from the crime books of Alan Wake. The cult was copycatting the murders from the books. In their heads, they were performing a ritual to bring Wake back. Their imagined prophet. After that case, I started looking into Wake's disappearance on the side. And you thought this case might be connected to him? His name does keep popping up. I just wanted you to have all the facts. Next time, give them to me before we find ourselves in the middle of a horror story. Subtitles being out of time is bugging me immensely. <laughs> That's an interesting angle that the cult would want to bring Wake back because maybe they think he's got the power to give them power, you know, with the typewriter and everything. Return to the heart. The page says Nightingale's in something called an overlap. Need to figure out exactly what that means. I'm happy I'm not in charge of this mess. Thanks. Let's start looking for Nightingale where he was killed. Well, this is going to start getting spooky. We will, uh, oh, hello. We will end it there then. Thank you very much for joining me, my lovely ladies and gentlemen. I will see you lovely folks next time. Cheers, much as always. Bye-bye.